Okay, today we're going to talk a little bit about swedging and brazing, copper tubing, and some different things we can do with the tools. Um, look closely at the, at the tool, and we cut this tube with a tubing cutter like this. Okay, and there are various different tubing cutters. One made by Rigid, this one here is a tubing cutter, and the tube goes inside here. You put it inside here, and you tighten this wheel down right here. This wheel gets right up against your tubing, and you want to just torque it down just a little bit, and then we start rotating around and cut it. I'm not going to cut it this moment. I'll, I'll make another video on cutting it. But when you cut the tubing, what happens is the end of the tube rolls inward, and it needs to be cleaned out before we do anything with this tube. So what we want to do is we have some different ways to... Uh, what we call ream it out and that's with a uh, different type of reaming tools this one here is got a point on it and it goes inside the tube and as well it does the outside's got little like razor blade teeth and a lot of people don't know but on the back side of your tubing bender it has a reamer on it as well so you can take this reaming tool and stick it inside here and just what you want to do is take the burrs off and make it smoother so that we can uh, work this tubing. So I'm just going to go ahead and use this reamer here. And you want to hold it so that the pipe opening is down, not up. So you, a lot of people want to tend to use a reamer like this or like this, but any metal shavings that come off your pipe, they're going to get inside your pipe. So we don't want any of that metal getting inside your system. So what we want to do is we want to hold it downward and we just rotate this tool back and forth. So you don't push it too hard. And when we're done, we've reamed the tube out. Now this is the side that's not reamed and you can sort of see like a little edge around the inside of that circumference of the circle. But if you look at this one here, this one has been reamed. It's a little bit thinner. The reason why we want to do that is because we're going to do what we call swedging. And a swedging allows two tubes of the same size, two tubes of the same size to stick together. Right now they're the same size and they can't connect them. So it opens one up so that one can fit inside the other. Now there's many different types of swedging tools. I'm going to demonstrate a couple. The first one is uh, this handheld swedging tool. Uh, this is called a swedging block here and it's a little hard to see but they're all labeled by the size of the tubing. And we're using 3 8 copper, so we're going to go ahead and use the 3 8 or the, I'm sorry, 3 8 over here, the opening that says 3 8 Okay? So then we stick the tube in, and when we stick it inside the block, it should be as high up as the tube that we're going to use. And you can see this is a little too high, so we're going to bring it down just a little bit, and it's about the same height of the tube. That's good enough. And then we're going to take this and lock it in place. And we want to tighten this tool down and have very little gap between the upper and lower parts of this swedging block. Okay? When that's pretty tight, we're ready to swedge it. Now, the reason why we want it tight is because we're going to use a hammer and knock something like a nail in here to open it up so the two tubes can fit together. And if it's not tight enough, your tube will start slipping down through the block. So this is called a swedge here. And it also has the 3 8 marking on the, so on the front. And we're going to stick it inside here. Notice it doesn't fit in too good. So what we do is we put that between our two fingers here, the bottom. And we hold the top with our forefinger and thumb like so. And then we're going to use a ball-peen hammer. And we're just going to strike that hammer just lightly to get it inside. Now right now we've got it to the first portion inside the tube. And in order to swedge it, we have to knock this down till this part bottoms out on the block. Now, the reason why we don't go too high up on this is because if we go too high, the top of that tube will bend over and we won't have a round one. If it's too low, we don't have enough material for the two of them to sit together firmly. So we're going to go ahead and stick it back in the block, and then what we're going to do is we're just going to tap on it, and you want to give it some good tap. Listen to it, the sound changes when you hit the bottom. Like right about now, 
I'm almost at the bottom here, and you can see it's starting to open up at the top there. So I'm going to keep knocking it down. Now it bottomed out. Now all we do is just rotate it and pull it out. And you can see the bottom half, the two are the same size. But the top half, now the two of them sit firmly together. So that's a swedge. Now, that one is really nice. And I'll show you the opening of it. And if you can see the two tubes, you can see the difference in diameter so that this one can fit inside of that one firmly. And also you can see how deep the swedge is. If we looked at it, it's about as deep as it is around. So that's how we want to make our swedge. This is nice and clean. Now watch this one. Uh, this is called a, a, a speed type of swedge. Um, this one doesn't work as great, so you gotta, you gotta play with it. I particularly don't like it because it overheats the pipe. But first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna ream it out, clean out that end. We've reamed it out, cleaned it out pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and set it in a block to hold it. So this is almost like a vise for copper tubing. And we're gonna eyeball this one for the height. I could sort of like tell you if it's 3 8 just for the heck of it. I eyeballed it. I'll take this one here and see how close I am to the height. So that's good. I'm going to go ahead and stick this in there, tighten it up. And this type of swedge comes in a kit. It actually goes on top of your drill bit. And that kit has many different types of swedges that go on your drill. So this is real big and this is smaller here and, and this fits inside of a drill. The kit can be bought at Johnstone if you have an account, but can also be bought from other places. It's called Spin Tools by Hex Shanks and this is Swagging Spin Set. So basically you put it, put it in a block, instead of hitting it with the hammer, we're going to set it here just to hold it so I can show you. As we're going to take this tool with the drill, we're going to start setting it. And we went ahead and reamed it out. So now you can see the opening of this one. Look, these two are both swedged, but look how nice and clean that swedge is, and look how beat up that is on the inside. You really have to be careful when you're using that speed swedge. It, it makes the wall of your copper tubing very thin compared to that one. It does work well at, to making a swedge where they fit together, but you have a thinner pipe, so it's not going to grab as good. So I'm just going to take and use the outside reamer to clean the edges here. I'm going to use the inside reamer, and I did hold it upside down. Shouldn't have done that, but making a video, it's hard to, to know which way's up. Okay, but it's still, if you look at it, it's very, very rough here on the edges. Okay, so we're going to use some sand cloth sandpaper and just hold it upside down and just sand it a little bit, make it sure it's clean. And we're going to hold it like this. I put it on the on something firm and sand it smooth. So you see the extra work with, I used a power tool to make the swedge faster, but then I have to do a lot more work to clean up the mess that it made for swedging. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you uh, a couple of different ways to braze. We're going to start off today with the turbo torch and then I'll make another video with the oxyacetylene and show you how to set the regulators and everything. But now I have a couple of tubes here already pre-swedged and we're going to go ahead and we're going to braze them together with some different types of solder and see what we get. So here we got a turbo torch. Um, this is just one solid tank. It's called a B tank. This is just straight up acetylene gas. This is our regulator on the top. The gauge on the top just tells you how much gas you have inside with just an on-off valve here. There is a regulator here to adjust the pressure. I'm going to show you that. Um, and this torch here is a self-lighting torch. Um, we call it turbo. It makes a lot of noise. A lot of people don't like it because of the flame size. But we have different size tips here that can go on the end. The only thing is, is those tips are not all connected to the self lighter. If you use one of these tips, you're going to have to use a striker like a regular oxy acetylene torch. So we're just going to use this one for today. 
Uh, I'm going to put it on the ground. Once you open it up, all you're going to do is just turn on the valve here. You can hear the gas coming out. And that's it. That's how you like to it. Now, I know it's going to be hard to hear me, so I might have to voice over the next portion of it. But now what we're going to do is we're going to take two pieces of copper tubing here. And we're going to go ahead and stick it inside the vise here. And I'm going to go ahead and get me a pair of safety glasses before I start. One moment. Okay. Solder's very important for brazing. Yes, cleaning it and making sure that your joint is clean. I didn't sand it too much, um, but these were all prepped before, before the video. Um, sill floss. These rods here, if you can see this one here, says it's a 15. That number 15 is the percentage of silver that's located inside of these brazing rods. You can also see closely on the rods, um, so it's probably a little hard to read on the camera, but they do print either whether it's stamped or marked on there that this is a 15. So if it gets taken out of the package, each one of them mark with 15%. Um, there's 0%, 10%, 15. Um, that 15 is really good as far as solder content for soldering copper to copper. This here is, is a 45%. It's a lot more silver, it costs more money, but this is really good for when you're brazing copper to steel, like condensers on refrigerators and everything. We're not going to use this today, but I will demonstrate a copper to steel braze uh, later and show you how we, how we go ahead and do a copper to steel. So today we're just doing copper to copper. So I'm going to go ahead and light this. It's going to be a little hard for me to talk while I'm doing it, but one thing you want to do is when you heat it, you want to heat the joint right where the two pipes meet. What I like to do is I'm going to put the heat on one side and I'm going to hold the solder and I'm going to take the solder and just go right around the braze joint here. And what's going to happen is the solder is going to pull towards the flame. The flame is going to draw that solder in. So the idea is to heat up the pipe so hot that if I was actually to take the torch away and go like this, the solder would still melt because of the temperature of the pipe. If the pipe is not hot enough, your solder will stick. So what I like to do is like to hold it there for a little bit, watch it change color, and then in doing so, just go ahead and braze right around. So I'm going to zoom in now so you guys can see that. And we're going to go ahead and go like this. So we light the torch, put the solder on the back side, let it heat up the pipe, it's going to touch it, it's not hot enough. And I'm done. That braze joint now is completely soldered and sealed. It only takes that long if a properly cleaned and prepped pipe is put in there. Now if you could see closely all around where the pipe is and the two pipes meet, they're all sealed. There's no air or no opening on, on that braze joint. The thing is, is you don't want to sit there too long. I've seen a lot of people do brazing and they're like going around and around and around and around and they're like spending way too much time when they're trying to braze uh, this tubing. So I want to show you something that even for that short period of time, this is a clean piece of folder here. I go like this and a little black ash, I don't know if you can see it, right about here, little black ash has appeared on there. I want you guys when you practice brazing, hold that pipe for a long period of time because if you do and you tap that on paper, you're going to get a large amount of that black soot. That's called oxidization. That's when um, copper tubing gives off oxygen when it's heated and expanded. So I'm going to go ahead and, and do one of these joints here. But I'm going to use a different type of solder. That, the, that These right here, they're little rings. I found these at Johnstone the other day. They come in different sizes. And... 
it's actually a little ring of solder. So I'm going to take the joint apart, stick that ring on top of the joint, and just let it sit there. And now I'm going to heat the pipe up and then watch how this braze joint works. Now I did have a problem, I don't know if any of you saw, a little piece of solder fell off of that ring because I put the heat, at too much heat directly to that piece of solder. So the ring, even though it made it easier to brace, I didn't use that whole piece. Here's, here's the remainder piece that fell off. But if you look here, we have this braze joint and what happened? Because the solder fell off, I lost a little bit of solder I didn't have a complete opening so if you're trying to repair a joint like that that had a leak let's say you brazed it and you found that there's a hole there a lot of times a hole is caused because you didn't clean the pipe good enough and you got oil or some debris on that pipe remember preparation is the most important part to this so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my 15 percent and just heat it up I'm going to watch this solder that's already there. Once it turns liquid fire, I'm going to go ahead and just do the whole thing with the stick. Again, I did not hold that torch there for a minute, two minutes, three minutes. I got in there, I hit work with the torch where I needed to. Once that solder started to melt and flow, I went ahead and I did my job. So if we go ahead and let's take a look at this pipe now, it is completely brazed all the way around. There's no leaks. So preparation of the tube is the most important thing you could do to um, tubing. I'm going to go ahead and, and do one more. Now this one here, because of that speed, uh, that speed tool, if you notice, and I don't want to touch with my hand, but there's, there's space there. Right in here, the joint was, um, was not that good. So if you look here, watch, I can, move move it around inside that joint I have too much play so when you have play like that you gotta be careful because too much solder can go down inside this braze joint here and cause a problem so I'm gonna go ahead and put this on what we want to do is we just take a pair of pliers and we squeeze it a little and then with the right pliers you can take and actually create what we call a pinch Now when you pinch it, the pipe is hot so i got to watch your hand. When you pinch it, it does close it up. There might sometimes be a little bit of an opening, but the rest of the pipe is sort of tight there. You don't want it too tight because when you braze, the solder goes in between those two joints. So I'm going to go ahead and braze that again. I'm going to try that ring one more time. But this time I'm going to try to be a little bit more careful not to put the flame directly on my solder. I'm going to try to put it to the pipe so that it sticks to it. So I'm going to put the ring on it. I'm going to stick the two pieces together. Let that ring fall down on top of the, the joint. And I'm going to put the heat just below that solder. I don't want to hit the solder directly and watch that solder liquefy. Then I'll bring the flame up just a little bit more just to go ahead and seal it up.
Now, again, an issue with that ring. Because I had a pinch and I had a slight opening there, the solder did seal the rest of the pipe where, where it met good. And if, if your swedge was good and tied all the way around, you wouldn't have that problem. So the only way I can fix it again is by using solder. So I'm going to go ahead and apply that solder again. And the opening's right there if you can see it. So I'm going to take my solder, heat it up. Now I'm going to put the solder right over the hole. And that looks good. Got my solder sealed up. Now, I know I demonstrated that when you're going to braise a joint, that you got to get the pipe hot enough so when you touch the solder to the to the pipe it melts. But one of the things I want to practice is I want to practice my heat and how to use my heat. One of the things I, I, I do is if the pipe's starting to get too hot, don't take your torch away from the pipe. Take your torch and back it up directly, keeping the flame constantly pointing at your braze joint, but pull it a little bit further away, it won't be as hot so you don't overheat your pipe. But what I like to practice is here I got a 3 8 opening on that pipe and this here is just to control your heat let me see if I can turn it so you can see it so if you see here I got an opening on the pipe I'm gonna take and cap that opening off right with solder this isn't something you would normally do. You'd probably pinch it and then solder it off on the end. But if you're careful with your flame, you can cap that off and keep the solder from dropping down in the hole. If you put too much heat, it's going to fall down in the hole. So what I like to do is I actually, this is unorthodox, where normally you heat the pipe and then you touch it. I'm actually going to heat the solder and let it stick to the pipe and then carefully apply heat till it smooths out and seals that opening. So that's what I'm going to try to do now. So let's go ahead and see what happens. I get it hot a little first. Now, two things that I did. One, I put some excessive solder on there, but I was careful not to apply too much heat because if I did, solder would fall right down in there and I'd still have that opening. If you look at this tube now, I sealed the whole end of that tube right up. It's all sealed. It'll, it'll never leak off the tip of that tube. Now, normally we wouldn't do this in everyday uh, refrigeration work, but just being able to control your flame and everything, it's just a good practice. Now the other thing you might have saw me do is, as I was heating it, I was taking the solder and going up the side of my tube. I noticed I had excessive amounts of solder on there, and I don't like it where it's all globbed up and too much solder. So I heat it up and just get it hot enough, and while this stick is cold, I slide it up, and you can see the excess solder was sticking to the pipe, to the uh, brazing rod. So I cleaned off the pipe, and then my pipe didn't have an excess um, excess solder on there so it looked a little better so again brazing is all about prepping the tube and getting it in there you can use these speed swedges there are some other tools in there that go in and then you squeeze them and then they expand but just like my fingers as they expand they expand the pipe but they have a gap here as my fingers open up and your tube will have lines in it where there be gaps in between and when you stick the two pipes together it won't be perfectly smooth like like those pieces were that I put together so old-fashioned hammer swedging is good it's the fastest method with the least amount of uh, work and prep before and after um, the speed swedges they, they tend to make the pipe a little bit thin so I'm not very fond of those and you have other swedges where you twist and you rotate the hand down like a flaring tool which pushes a swedge down in. And that seems to have 
so here's another type of sludging method. The first thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and prep our tube again. We want to go ahead and clean out any loose debris of tubing. We want to make sure that there's no burrs and that the tubing is reamed out nicely. Don't blow on the tube. Don't take your fingers and do this when you're sanding it and cleaning it. You got oil on your fingers. If you ever touch a window and saw your fingerprints on it, you got oils on your fingers, that oil will reduce your solder. But we'll prep that before you braise it. So go ahead and stick that tool in our block just like we did before. It should be as high as it is around. And then we have this other tool, which is another type of swedging tool. It looks like this here. And this is for quarter inch tubing and three eighths tubing. And we're sticking in there. I have to back it off for a second. Hold on. Now this is the one that, you know, I learned how to do brazing in and it works, but it's a lot more work to do this. So you go ahead and stick this tool in and then what you want to do is you want to rotate it so that it locks onto that block. And then what you want to do is you're going to go in and you have to force it in. So we're going to keep rotating it. And as we're rotating it, and I'll go ahead and leave it on the vise so you can probably see a little better. As we're rotating it, it's pushing the swedge down. Now some tubing is so hard the swedge doesn't go in very easily, so you got to keep trying it. So we're going to keep rotating the swedge down until we bottom out on that tube. Now this is doing the same thing as that hammer swedge, but as you can see I'm having to put a lot more hand force in there, and if you have to do more than one of these, it's not fun to do. But if you can't get a hammer in a place that you're trying to swedge, this is another, another alternative. Now, go ahead and swedge it. Now, what I noticed is that it wasn't super tight. I think my tube might have been sliding down a little bit, but I have to take it off the vise so I can get some more force on it. I have to bottom it out. <clears throat> now, after I rotate it, we back it off to bring it out of the tube till it comes out of the tube, rotate it, take it out. Now, if we look, We'll take, well, this tube won't fit, but we can take our copper, our 3 h tube in here. And as you can see, the 3 h tube is going to fit right inside that swedge there. Let me see if I can show you that it fits just good. And there's the swedge done by this tool. It's a flaring sweat swedging kit. Um, it comes with two of these blocks. One, one other block is for larger tubing. Um, these kits come with various size swedges here. This is a flaring tool for flaring. We're using